Riga, capital city of Latvia and home to more than 700,000 people. It has been declared World Cultural Heritage by the UNESCO. A good place to contemplate about contrasts. For example, the enlightening contrast between the Art Nouveau buildings and Riga's wooden houses. Strolling through the town, another less amusing contrast reveals itself. Beautifully restored buildings face other houses that have been much neglected. Green nets are wrapped all over the walls to keep dilapidated bits from falling on bypasses. Once sharp cut ornaments are dissolving and the color of the original paint can only be guessed. And this is no isolated phenomenon. A striking number of Riga's buildings are abandoned or at least in a bad condition. Precious architectural heritage is falling to bits. Plenty of space remains unused. But there are efforts to regenerate the city. Whole areas have been restored, plenty other projects are going on. But what is being done? We are going to explore this issue and take you along. We are in Maskavas Forstate. It's a working class district composed of many wooden houses. Most of them in a shabby, sleazy condition. The association Free Riga tries to do something about it. In 2013 there was a feel that there is so little space for initiatives, for creative uh, um, projects, for culture, for... Although there is so much empty space, at the same time there is no space for for doing something which is uh, like benefiting, benefiting also the society and uh, or just you know allows people to make something it somehow became really serious suddenly that oh people really care about this oh every fifth building is empty it resonates with kind of everybody it, it's not just in some people's like this uh, core group heads free riga introduced the concept of temporary use House owners give their property to initiatives for little money and limited time. In exchange, the initiatives promise to restore the houses. Temporary use helps owners. Uh, when their property is empty, they have costs anyway, because they have to pay taxes, they have to maintain it, they have to pay security. If they don't pay security, everything is stolen out of the property, all metal, and it, it, it is, goes into ruin. So temporary use is uh, offering the owners to take over the property for a certain time. If it's in a good condition, then maybe shorter. If it's not so good condition, then one has to also invest something in for a longer time, for maybe four, five years already. And uh, we, as organizers of temporary use Free Riga, we uh, curate and attract um, and work with initiatives because we have this big network of initiatives in Riga, because we come from, from that environment. A year ago I heard about Free Riga, but I didn't call them, I didn't, I wanted to understood what I want to do. So when I thought I was ready, I called them up and said, I want to find a space, a place to make something. Toms and his friends are restoring the house. They need a place for their film production firm. Also, they will organize concerts in the garden and turn the place into a cultural center. Uh, this house opened where we are here now, uh, which was the first owner that just, she had been in our meetings, the first meetings, and she just had come to us herself and said, oh, I have this house, uh, I have two floors empty, uh, the third floor is, okay, flats, I, I can manage that, but I don't know how to manage the first floors because she didn't have enough money and she wanted also really to have activity in this inner city neighborhood which is a bit, you know, shabby, run down and people look at it kind of still not maybe so trusting. She wanted to have a culture place here. So uh, that was why she uh, was attracted by Free Riga idea. Free Riga started as an art movement. The sticker Occupy Me covered the whole city, marking empty buildings. Expanding from their arty roots, the movement began to organize forming the association Free Riga. It is growing quickly and taking care of more and more houses. I imagine Free Riga <laughs> in 10 years, uh, that uh, we would uh, have helped to open in 10 years probably some 60, 70 buildings. So we are just now in the process of going out. The 
my mind, uh, rig is not an exception. Uh, you can find out in Eastern Europe uh, a lot of places uh, which are tended to be shrinking cities, as Riga has lost some hundred thousands of inhabitants during the last 25 years. And that's why one of the reasons why the buildings are empty. It's industrial uh, industry has, has been closed and um, people just now migrating to west to find out uh, the better places to live. And birth rate is, is uh, negative and that's all obstacles coming together and the result is that we have a lot of, of buildings which are empty. And by the way, the most of hundred, um, the most of, of those wooden ones are built more than 100 years ago, yeah, 150 years old, and it's time to, let's say, to die for them. If not, uh, let's say, some, some intent to restore them. I presume that they should be restored. The question is, who will pay? Uh, it's a hobby of wealthy people to restore them. And some small intents of municipality but uh, we should admit that uh, some few percent of ownership of old buildings are in the hands of state or, or, or municipality. The total majority are privately owned. As sometimes they are not people, they are banks or let's say companies who don't know the building. They have them as, as a movable asset which has some, let's say, loan has been taken for this, as, for this building. And uh, banks just now, after this economic crisis, some, some years ago, which, which took uh, place, they are not happy having so much uh, buildings as an assets. But uh, they're not interested in, in a re, 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 no restoring them, as they have no idea what to put in. At the opposite of the old town, the island of Kipsala is a great example of successful regeneration. After the Soviet collapse, the architect Maris and Zaiga Gali started to transform the former neighborhood of fishermen into a new design area. But beauty has its price. The working class doesn't live here anymore. The neighborhood is rich and a new part of the Riga society took possession of the place. However, not all buildings look like this on the island. There are still empty places which need to be restored and used for something. It is the case of Zunda Garden. Not used by anyone, the former factory is now the welcome land of temporary cultural events. It is in this structure that we found back Free Riga. The movement offered the opportunity to Total Dobscher, an arts center organization, to use the space. Tonight, it is the first event of Total Dobscher here, a concert of another kind where the activists have a part to play. We joined Free Riga because of one reason, to, to have a space. To, to run our activities. I'm very, very happy about this movement, Free Riga. What we a little bit miss is uh, uh, the involvement or, or more active participation uh, from, from those who are looking for the space. And now we are here doing this this first event in the space of Free Riga and this is a concert of sound uh, sound artists. There are things going to be going on around the whole space and we don't want you to kind of be distracted by what you're seeing just to have a listen just to listen and experience the sound just to sound. We saw photographs of the space before we came and, and now we've arrived, it's actually very different from the building we were expecting. Um, we were going to use the walls more, and, but they, they actually don't make as much sound as we thought they would. Um, this, the space isn't actually that echoey, 
which we thought it might be, um, things like that. And it's it's a lot bigger than we thought. So it's actually it's quite a challenge to work in a space like this. Some of us using quite quiet sounds, but I think we've we've got ways of dealing with that. Formed as a workers' district, Griesenkalns is one of the quarters in Riga which is very rich in wooden houses. Since 2013, Koka Riga has been establishing itself as the intellectual center of the quarter when it comes to preserving, archiving and educating about this wooden heritage. Vladimir Einbaums, the head of the organization, gives a tour through the quarter. Viena no pirmām ielām, kas tiek renovēta šīnī rajonā, būs renovētas piecas ielas kopsumā, ir Murnieku ielā. Kā pārējā nam īpašniekiem, renovēs savas ēgas. Kvakarīgas road to a well-restored krizen kalns is long and rocky though. Most residents in this quarter are not very rich. Urgent repairing works are often done in the cheapest way, which then results in a look that derives much from the historical original. Post-Soviet privatization strategies contribute further to the problem. Te nepareiza privatizācijas politika notikusi, jo Rīgā koka mājas privatizēja pa dzīvokļiem. Un iedomājot, šī stāvā būtu četri privatizēti dzīvokļi, kuri dzīvo pārsvara pensionāri. Un, ja teik jums, virs viena pārie nepiedavās dēļ tā, ka viņam nav naudas galvenais, ir naudas problēmas. Bieži notiek tā, ka tagad man bija gadījums arī, es gāju konsultāciju, ka Cilvēki uzlika jaunu parkietu, bet viņam caurojas vecas. Viņi, protams, sabojējušies. Visa apakšējas karkās ir sapuvis, dēļ tā, ka ūdens iet veca caurojas. Ā, viņš negrib mainīt. Viņam stāsta, kā vajag mainīt, bet viņš saka, ka es neaiztikšu savu parkietu. Pārējais viss gaida, kad mājas sabruk vai nodegs, tad viņi saņems jaunas dzīvokļi. For those who are capable and willing to preserve the building from deterioration, Koka Riga offers a series of workshops and consults owners as well as other interested people about their possibilities. We learn a lot of and I, and I find that this is just, just starting to understand what do you want to, to learn. In practice we learn how to uh, evaluate quality of old uh, wooden building how to do practical reparation of wooden building, how to do by yourself uh, colors. Now it's become very popular to develop uh, places outside of Riga Centre, to develop uh, and to keep this uh, historical uh, wooden houses. Not, not only those who, are, who have very uh, high uh, historical value, but, but simple wooden houses, which is our own hist uh, history. A trend, however, might not be strong enough to preserve all of Riga's wooden architecture. Paliks 80% tikai koka ēkas Rīga, pārējai visi novemti bojajai. Varbūt vairāk 7%, varbūt es pārspīvēju, bet 20 gadu laikā viņa šī arhitektūra izzūdīs vienkārši. Therefore, it is also one of Koka Riga's high priority targets to take photos of all wooden houses in Riga. Exhibitions follow quickly. Es aicinām brīvprātīgi, bet brīvprātīgi ir ļoti grūti strādāt, jo mums brīvprātīgi ir normāli cilvēki brauc uz ārzemēm. Bet tie, kas ne visai, nu, teiksim, tādi zinoši cilvēki, ar viņiem grūti strādāt, viņiem visu laiku jāsieko uz pirkstiem, jā, un jāvada un vieglāk pašam izdarīt, nekā viņiem uzdot. At least, not all aspects on the agenda seem to be so nerve-wracking. Kelsiema Quarter, a Thursday evening. As usual during the summer months, the venue organizes a concert. The yard is full and it will be the same if we had come for their Saturday markets.
A set of wooden houses on Castia Maiella from the later 19th century have been restored, with mostly EU money. And for the next 50 years, nobody needs to worry about. They are incorporated into a functioning business model that keeps them alive and used like in the good old days. Still in the center of Riga, next to the Dogava River, we find Spikery. The story of Spikery starts in the 14th century. At that time, the place was utilized for cargo ships. The storehouses that one can see in the quarter today were built in the 19th century. While before it was a obvious area where nobody would go, Spikery became a cultural place where art galleries, museums, restaurants and other offices coexist. This change was actually possible thanks to the city and the European Union founding. Three to four years ago, where the place was new, it was a popular cultural spot. Now the quarter seems to have more difficulties to attract people. It suffers from the high trends and the appearance of new trendy spots. Still, Spikery is and will be a model of urban regeneration for the city of Riga. I suppose there should be some changes in the law, for example, this, this um, uh, case on, on squattering, given rights to, to enter the building uh, if it's not inhabited, to rise up uh, uh, taxes on the buildings which are uh, left for a fate. And anyway, those administrative regulations, that's one of, one of the ways. And other, uh, you know, there are maybe too much regulations on, on a matter of uh, preserving, keeping as it is. As we can't, um, let's say, put on, on a one plate, keep cellar and uh, Moscow are forced a big difference in the quality of the dwelling houses per se. It's uh, crude to, to say stay at is, as it is in Moscow at first, uh, this working class uh, rubbish, I should say, the slums. Uh, let's keep them, let's uh, try to restore. They should be given chance to, to coming in investors, developers, uh, make new dwelling houses, cheap, in, in a good sense, uh, low um, rise, I suppose, two, three-story houses. The question is, for which reason you are going to restore the houses are intended to be livable. We are not making a museum. Well, what have we seen? Riga's resurrection is pushed forward by plenty different initiatives. But shall all buildings benefit from restoration or only create works of architecture? What is restoration all about? For a city like Riga, a compromise has to be found. The heart of the city is falling to pieces. This is not only a problem of aesthetics, but also a problem of space to live in. The remaining bits are too expensive for most ordinary people. They have to be satisfied living in concrete tower blocks from Soviet times in Riga suburbs. Riga isn't a museum, but a capital city. Social and pragmatic needs compete with architectural heritage preservation. Riga lacks a unified regeneration strategy. What could encourage people to take care of run-on buildings? The organizations do their share, but political changes could enhance the progress. Maybe we could further rise the taxes for degenerated buildings or possibly legalize squatting. It could also be helpful to condense the legal framework for restoration, which is currently so complex that it's preventing many positive actions. There's a lot to think about and even more to do. But well, this is Riga. If the Art Nouveau is Riga's salt and the wooden buildings are the peppercorns, 
then maybe the rundown house is out of vinegar. A city of paradoxes and the ever ongoing work. A city that will never be finished. <laughs>